Look, man, this game was crazy. The last two minutes of this game was complete insanity. A lob dunk by DeAndre Ayton to win the game. A go-ahead game winner out of bounds. Like, what are we, what? Talk about the fact that the ball was out on Devin Booker. It could have been out on Patrick Beverly, and I could have swayed the entire momentum of the game. You talk about the fact that Paul George had two opportunities to put his team up by three and seal the game, and he missed both. This game was crazy, like I said, man. Look, before I get into the recap, leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And if you enjoy the NBA content, I urge you to go ahead and share it with your friends so they can check out the channel. Besides all that, let's get right into the video. Look, this game was insanity, like I said. You talk about the fact that the Suns have the, they have their big core. Devin Booker and DeAndre Ayton. I got one more guy to add to that. Cameron fucking Payne. Cameron Payne, 29 points, 9 assists. This guy is hooping like... He is the second coming of Steve Nash, Darren Williams. Who, who else do I got to say? Like, we saw him go crazy in the Lakers series, and we thought that was an anomaly. I thought it was an anomaly, honestly. But this guy has just been up in his game, playing at an elite level while CP3 is out, and he looks like he's ho hooping with more confidence every single day. Now, this is a guy that wasn't even in the league last year. Wasn't he in the league? He, he barely got into the league due to the bubble when the Suns picked him up, and since then, he's been balling out. So I got to give credit to this guy. Crazy game today. DeAndre Ayton, like, whoa. I said before that this playoffs has proven so many narratives against this guy wrong. This guy has shattered whatever negative things you had against him. Shut up. Don't even say nothing no more. Just be quiet. Sit there in silence because this guy's balling out of, out of his mind. Like, you could talk about the fact he had 24 points and 14 rebounds. The fact that he was dominant from the very jump all the way to the end. You could talk about the fact that he had the go-ahead game winning dunk. Beautiful play drawn by Monty Williams, to say the least right now. Beautiful play to win the game and that's probably that's probably the biggest take that everybody will take from this game but there's so much more to that like i gotta talk about paul george well actually before i get to paul george talk about devin booker devin booker didn't shoot great this night but man look when devin booker's on the court he makes it easy for everybody else you talk about the fact that in that in this game you had dario sarge finish with 11 points and in that first few quarters the first few quarters first half he looked great was playing great basketball giving him quality production for the suns Cam Johnson, like, these are all guys that are just giving you something. And mind you, the Suns didn't even shoot the ball. It only had six threes. Only six threes in this game. So the team played as a whole great basketball, great defense. They did what they needed to do. And it starts with the fact that when you have dominant player and DeAndre Ayton and Cameron Payne going off, then it is what it is. But due to that, we got to talk about Paul George. Look, I said before... Paul George, Pandemic P, whatever you want to call this guy, I understand that that's, that's the joke of the town. And it, it's really, really unfortunate because this guy over the past few games has been playing very, very well. But it doesn't even matter no more because of what happened tonight. And to be fair, it was a bad showing. He didn't shoot the ball well. And before I get to the free throws, we got to talk about the fact that he had an opportunity to seal this game. Thanks to the defense of his own teammate, Patrick Beverly, who was able to strip the ball from Devin Booker and the ball was out on Devin Booker. Now, people are going to talk about that play and say, well, maybe that was out on Patrick Beverly because if you go back in history, then we have to go look at all these different types of balls that were stripped out of people's hands and those balls might have been overturned. But look, that's besides the point. You look at replay, the replay says the ball is out on Devin Booker. It's out on Devin Booker. It's not up to us to go ahead and talk about, oh, is this how they should do it? Now, hey, look, it's out on him, it's out on him. But that was great defense by Devin, by Patrick Beverly, and it set up the Clippers to seal this game for them to win. Paul George gets the ball, best player. You have two shots at the free throw line. Two shots. Now, this is what's tough about watching Paul George, man, because it seems like when the, I, and I, I was going to put out a video on this before. And what I said in that video, you guys probably didn't see it. I said that because the pressure was so limited now because Kawhi was gone. The pressure had been taken off this man's neck because now the expectations weren't to just win a championship. It was just to stay afloat in that jazz series. But somehow they won that series. Now the pressure has gotten higher. You look at this game. This game got even crazy amount of pressure with all the stoppages and all the big moments that happened within this game. Paul George missing two of those free throws. It's just a bad look. And it just goes into the flow of him being pandemic P, whatever you want to call him. It's such a bad look because this guy... It's already getting a bad rap by NBA Twitter. You go on Twitter right now, they're probably on this man's neck crazy. But to be fair, he deserves it. You cannot miss two free throws like that. You just can't. You, you just can't. And then when you miss those two free throws, it leads to an immediate lob dunk by DeAndre Ayton, who's having a crazy game. Now you only got 0.7 seconds with no timeouts to go ahead and score a basket, which y'all didn't do, and you lose the game. 
and this was a game that was basically gifted in your hands. All you gotta do is hit one, or hit, or just just hit, just hit, 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 hit your free throws. This is a tough, tough loss by the Clippers, and I mean, looking at it, you lost but this game by one point on the road. You have game three, but CP3 might be available for game three. We don't know when Kawhi is gonna be back. This is tough, man. This is tough. Like, man, if you're a Clippers fan, I know, I know you're sick right now. If you're a Suns fan, you guys got away with a game. Oh, this was. It just felt like the momentum was switching complete like so many times during this game. And I will say this too about the game that the NBA has to fix before I close out this video. Because during this game, there were moments where it was going back and forth. Like it was going Imano Imano. Like, hey, Devin Bucker hits a shot. PG hits a shot. Luke Kennard hits a big time bucket. McCall Bridges hits a big big time bucket. Guys are going back and forth. But when that two minutes hit, it seemed like the NBA and the refs, the stoppages ruined the momentum of that game and teams really, really couldn't get their momentum back. And they can't do that. That's gonna ruin a lot of games. You can't do that. That's, that's just like, we, we, can, we came to see the players hoop. Let them hoop. Come in when you need to come in, but don't, don't ruin the game. But again, big, big time game. Crazy game by DeAndre Ayton. Horrible performance by Paul George, but Again, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like on it. Subscribe if you're new. And if you enjoy the NBA content, I urge you to just go ahead and share with your friends. Until next time, stay on beat.